awesome. Good morning. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you on behalf of all three of us. Thank you so much for your support and your love and prayers as we're out in China. It's so amazing to know that we're not just three people that went to live in China, but there were three people that were sent out from a church family that cares about us and believes in us and prays for us. And many of you have given financially to help us out, be out there. So thank you for that. Uh, we've met dozens of other missionaries where that's just not the case. So we know we're super privileged and blessed by that. So thank you. Uh, my missionary journey started when I was 14. Uh, I went to Nicaragua in South America for about two weeks for a short-term missions trip. And it was there that my eyes were open to a world of pain and need like I'd never seen before. Obviously, there's need here in America, and you can turn on the news or read an article on the internet. But when you step into a place physically and you're confronted with what's in front of you, it, it impacts you, it shapes you. I remember one day we were walking down the road in Nicaragua, and there's a boy that was just a few years younger than me, probably 11 years old. You could tell he lived on the side of the road, and he begged for money, for food, and he carried around this little jar of glue that he would sniff throughout the day to get a high from it. And as he approached us, he came up to me and suddenly grabbed hold of me. And I was super startled, super shaken, not just on the outside, but on the inside, knowing that this boy wasn't alone, but there was countless others like him in his same case that every single day wake up to this pain. And I was privileged to grow up where I didn't have to experience that and realistically in my future never would live the similar life that he does. Fast forward a few years later when I was 18, I went to China for the first time. And it was there that I saw a world of people where there's millions and millions and millions of people in China and countries similar to it, where there's entire people groups that have never heard the name of Jesus. There's no one reaching them and there's no chance for them to hear. And knowing that we in America, we're so blessed and privileged that there's a church on every corner. We can take it for granted sometimes, but to grow up in a culture where it's free to pursue Jesus and even other religions, it's such a different story from what they experienced. As I came home uh, from that first time in China and continued to grow up in my faith, I realized that in my life I'd worked so hard at making Jesus a part of my life. And I'd forgot along the way that Jesus never wanted to be a part of our life, but he wants to be the point of our life. And the reality is that he gave everything for us and he expects that we give everything in return for everything that he gives us. And I know that, that doesn't mean that everyone's meant to live in China or that everyone's meant to go live in some other country. Most of us will stay living in Roseville, and that's a good thing. But we need to remember that we live by and we're surrounded by people every single day that need the hope that lives inside of us, that need the Jesus that live beside us, that our neighbors, our coworkers, our classmates, the people that we stand next to in line at the store, they may look happy on the outside and strong on the outside, but the reality is that they do not know this hope that we have for today, but also the hope for eternity. And we may not know what to say. I, I rarely know what to say when I see someone walking by. And we may not always feel like I, I rarely have this feeling of like, oh, I have to share with this person. But it's those simple acts of obedience when we say, you know, I'm going to love the person next to me. Like God's called me to love them. I may not feel like it, but I'm going to step out and do it. And as we plant those seeds they will grow and people will respond because Jesus said we are the light of the world. So let's let our light shine every single day. Emily and Gunnar are going to share some more stories. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yes, as uh, Preston said, uh, about eight months ago, we all moved out to China and um, it's been awesome so far. That, that was actually my third time. I went three years ago with these guys and a couple other friends and, um, and when I was there for the first time, I met a wonderful girl named Rebecca, and we became really close friends, and um, over the years, we stayed connected, and so when we moved out there, it was awesome that, or it still is awesome that we've been getting to grow in our friendship, and I've just been able to share Jesus with her. Um, and I, about a month after we moved, moved to China, she invited us to her house for dinner, and gladly we went to enjoy some great Chinese food. And at one point in the night, she pulled me aside, and she said, Emily, I have a really important question for you. She said, will you still be my friend if I never believe in Jesus? And I was a little shaken, but just responded, of course, yes, I love you. I love being your friend. I love having a relationship with you. And as, as I walked away that night, I just kept thinking about that question, thinking about my response, and I was like, I knew I, what I said was right, and but I just it, was, it just moved me. And I came to this realization that, 
what I said was right because I was created for love. I was created for relationships, to make friends with people and share the love of Jesus. I was not created to make converts. And so I could confidently say, yes, I love you. I love to be your friend because that is what I'm created for. Um, and at these, that's what these last eight months have been. It's been eight months of, of making friends and loving people and studying Chinese and loving friends while we're studying Chinese. And it's, it's just the reality of life. It's as simple as that. And um, we've also been able to love and connect with and make friends with some awesome local believers. And we've started a discipleship community at our house, which is awesome. We get to make food together and just look at the life of Jesus together. Ask God what he's saying and help them respond. What are we going to do about it? And um, it's been really exciting to take the culture of the rock of, of discipleship and bring it to China and to build a community there of discipleship. So it's been a really exciting journey. Definitely have the ups and downs, just the day-to-day -day normal life, but it's exciting to uh, get to walk it out in China with these guys. So there you have it. And uh, I just think that Press and I both agree that Emily is amazing because a lot of our ministry uh, has a lot of women. Um, there just aren't a lot of guys, whether it's in our discipleship community where we have one dude um, or our English corners where it's mostly females. And Emily really carries that load and just is a great friend. So she's an awesome leader, raising up other female leaders. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's we, we have, you know, very intentional ministry, whether it's in villages where people have never heard the gospel for generations or... Um, it's, you know, college students finding the up and coming leaders and, um, but it's, uh, sometimes like it's in the mundane, the daily life where there, there are opportunities for encounter. Uh, we were in a taxi in Thailand, uh, at a retreat and, uh, I noticed that our taxi driver had some, some lumps on his hand. Um, and we'd been talking and he was, he was Buddhist and, um, I asked if I could pray for his hands and he said, sure. So we, we pray, and the Holy Spirit just started to fill the car. You could just sense the, the presence of the Lord in the car. And I asked how his hands were, and he said that there was no pain. So he starts moving them, and I had noticed he wasn't able to move them like that before. And he, he got all excited, and you know, I, I say, Louis, Jesus loves you. He, he sent us from America to China to Thailand to tell you that Jesus loves you, and he is for you. And he's like, oh, Jesus is awesome. And, uh, and then two days later, we uh, hailed an Uber, and it was Louie again. And I'm just like, Louie, how are you doing? And I was just like, Louie, Jesus is clearly after your heart. Like, I just want to affirm again that the Father loves you, and he knows you. Um, and there are other moments where uh, we were actually on a, a village trip, and we were driving around, and Emily had, had a word about a broken down car. She's like, I don't know what we're supposed to do if we find a broken down car, but that's all I got. So we, we pass by this truck that's broken down on this hill, and uh, Emily's like, hey, guys, I got a word about a broken down car. So I reverse the car and just back up, and we wave to the guys, park, get out, and Preston had a word about a headache, and he asked one of the guys, hey, do you have, do you have head pain? And the guy's just like, how, how do you know? And I mean, the rest of the time, he was just like staring at Preston, just like... How did you know that? Just like asking over and over. And we got to pray with him, but he was still just so shocked. He was kind of just like resistant because he just could not figure out how Preston knew that he had a headache. Uh, but we were just able to share Jesus with them and just say that, you know, they said they believed in the, the RMB, which is the Chinese currency. That, that's what their belief was in money. But we just shared that Jesus is greater than money and that he loves them. He was there to encounter them. Um, and we were, we were also in a, a Hue village, which is uh, predominantly Muslim. There are about seven to 9,000 Muslims there. Um, and we just stumbled into this town, got out, made friends. They were all very welcoming and kind. Uh, but as we started talking to some of our new friends, um, this is a very devout Muslim village. They have a training school there. We met people uh, from Syria, um, people from, I think, different nations come and they, they go to this, this Islamic training school. But as we were talking to our new friends, it's just it's always a challenge when you meet someone else that is 100% convinced in what they believe. That when they, they believe in uh, their own reality, their own concept of God that is different to ours, but it makes you reflect, do I truly believe that Jesus has no rival and no equal? Do I truly believe that he is the only way and I'm willing to lay my life down for it? 
And just as Preston said, Jesus didn't ask, oh, can I be part of your life, part of your little funds? Like, no, Jesus asked for our entire life. That's what he demands. He wants all of us because he's so good. He's so loving and so powerful. And I just believe even as we are in China, um, our family here, all of you, you have your, your own place, whether it's your neighborhood or your work or your school, where Jesus on a daily basis wants to encounter you. He wants to encounter us, and he wants you to, to go from your house being fueled by his love, not just working on mission from this place of, oh, I have to do this. I hear stories at church all the time. We're supposed to pray for the sick, but really being just so full of the love of Jesus that you see someone, and it's like, man, this is a person. Like, I don't care how I feel right now. That I just sense the love of Jesus for them. And I pray that we would all have that mindset. And I believe Jesus wants to release that even this morning, just a new level that he is always available, not just once a week at church or at a healing service, but he is always radically available. Yeah.